Hi, everybody. Um, I am Lena Lin, and thank you for coming. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about uh, Dr. Liu and I both are going to talk about how to care for your eyes uh, during COVID-19. Um, so these are just the things that we will be talking about. Hold on a second. Let me enlarge the screen for a second. Okay, there we go. So, um, okay, so um, we all know that, you know, vision uh, demands are increasingly over time. Can you see me? Okay, anyway. Um, so we used to be, um, we used to be hunter and gatherers, okay, a long, long, long time ago. Um, you know, we need to have um, a great vision in order to see clear, in order to be able to hunt uh, and um, get food, put food on the table, and you also have to be have to gather food. Um, so you know, uh, you also need to have great vision um, to be able to do that. So you can see, you know, things far away on the tree or, you know, at a, at a far distance. And, um, you know, and then people learn how to read and write. And that's, um, you know, we start using our eyes a lot more and, you know, paint and draw. And let's see here. One second. And, um, now, uh, the past, uh, you know, within a hundred years, um, you know, we have been using a lot more computer, uh, consumer electronics, communication, uh, watching TV. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, near use for our eyes. So uh, nowadays uh, we use uh, multiple devices, and more than eighty. 3% of Americans report using digital device for more than two hours a day. And of those, 53% of those, they use two or more devices simultaneously, okay? And 60% um, of those people, they, they notice that they uh, experience symptoms of digital eye strain. So, you know, we're probably all guilty of that too, you know, using multiple screens. So as the and, um, you know, so let's see, pre-pandemic, what happens um, here? Um, pre-pandemic, we already have been using uh, our screens a lot, okay? For example, look at this chart, um, you know, um, CDC reports that toddlers, they spend less than two hours a day, four, four to seven-year-olds, they spend like four hours, and it kind of increases up to 11 to 14, about nine hours, and then decreases about high schoolers, I think, because, um, you know, they have more um, homework to do. And adults, you know, of course, you work all day, and then, and then um, you know, you go home, you still, you know, uh, watch TV and, and um, you know, do more work in some cases. So, um, so now, you know, uh, we're in the middle of pandemic and things really shift, okay? Um, you know, uh, before at least uh, kids go to school, there's no electronics uh, or, you know, um, adults too, but now everybody's been um, stuck at home. Many of us are still at home working. So now, you know, you're in using computer to do homework, uh, using computer to do work, and, you know, you use computer um, you know, uh, and phone to to uh, connect with your family. So definitely increasing. So what happens as a result? Um, then a lot of people start complaining about having a digital eye strain. Okay, or in the past it's called a, um, a visual uh, a computer syndrome. Okay, and what what does that mean? So you know, as a consequence of us sitting in front of TV. All, uh, or computer screens all day long, you get headaches, you get blurry vision. Some people feel double, see double, or um, you know, your eyes get red and dry and get watery. You get neck and shoulder pain. 
So our eyes, like I said before, are not, um, you know, uh, made for looking, staring at a screen all day long. And, you know, so if we do that without any break and then, um, you know, at the end of the day, our eye muscles cannot relax because when we stare at a screen or looking at something close up, our eye muscles have to move in. But if you need to look up, our muscles have to relax. But as a result of staring at the screen or looking at something close up for a long time, when we need to relax, our eyes can't. So that's when the double visions occur or blurry vision occur. And when we do that, um, we also, um, our eyes, uh, we don't blink so much. So our eyes get dry and, you know, and they get red because we do need to have that constant blinking action for uh, our eyes to get lubricated. And then when they're dry, you, your eyes telling your brain, say, hey, you know, my, um, your eyes are dry, give me some tears. And then your eyes start to water. And that's why people are, are, are always asking, um, how come my eyes are not dry, they're always watery. You know, that could be one of the reasons. And Dr. Loop later on, she's gonna tell you more about uh, why people are watering. And um, so just gonna talk about um, eye care at home. Um, how do we take care of our eyes, okay? Just, um, you know, um, since we're on computer all the time, one, uh, you know, important thing is to set set up our workstation, our study area um, appropriately. So that way, you know, um, uh, it, it's more, uh, econ um, uh, what is it, uh, ergonomical, okay? So uh, for example, uh, we keep the distance uh, from our eye to the monitor about 20 to 24 inches, about arm's length is okay. Some people put it a little further out, that's okay too, you know, whatever you're comfortable, uh, but just not closer than that. And then your angle is at about, um, the monitor angle is about 10 to 15 degrees below the line of sight. So you wanna look down a little bit on your computer, not up, you know, a lot of people, um, they, they uh, place their screens, you know, overhead. Um, so you constantly have to look up and that can, you know, strain your neck or, you know, that keep your eyes wide open. So, you know, less, uh, more exposure to air, uh, you know, if you have air condition or, or heater that makes it worse. So, you know, you wanna make sure it's, uh, it's uh, angled down a little bit. And uh, your arm, arm and legs are parallel to the floor. And ideally you wanna have also a wrist rest, an elbow rest on your chair. Um, so that way, you know, it's more comfortable. It can reduce, uh, you know, chances of carpal, carpal tunnel. And also this, we don't see a lot, um, you know, document holder. If we have a document holder that uh, you put next to the computer, so that, that way your eyes don't have too far to go and you don't have to move your neck too much. So that can help uh, reduce some of the, uh, you know, head and shoulder pain. Okay, so next is how we place the uh, computer. Okay, um, a lot of time we think, wow, you know, uh, I sit by the window, you know, I want to have a good view. So we put our computer, you know, just right against facing the window, but uh, that creates a lot of glare. So it's a good way to place your uh, computer is like this here, you know, it's on the side of the windows. And you want to also make sure the window, uh, the, um, the screen or curtains down. So that way you don't have a lot of outside glare as, as well. So that is a good setup there. And um, also we want to have, when we're at our desk, we want to have uh, appropriate lighting, okay? So it's good to have lighting at the desk and also overhead lighting as well. So you want it to be comfortable not too bright and not too, not too dark either. So um, when we, a lot of kids or even adults, we go to bed and we wanna, you know, read up on news or things like that. And, or kids, a lot of time they do their homework on, on cell phone too. And that's just, um, you know, and they sometimes, they don't want parents to know, find out about it or they read in the dark. So that's not, um, you know, uh, healthy for the eyes either. So, and also, um, you know, we all now know that it's not good to um, 
look at our phone or any electronics before an hour before we go to bed because that affects our sleep pattern. Um, that Im that uh, kind of like a blue light, you know, tells your body, okay, it's uh, it's not time to sleep yet. So, um, so we had a setup, and we know we have to have appropriate lighting. Now, uh, it's important also to um, take breaks. So, so remember, uh, 2020 20 rule. It just means um, every 20 minutes you look away 20 feet at uh, something away from your eyes for something for 20 seconds. Okay, so 20 minutes, look away 20 feet for 20 seconds. So um, that way your eyes constantly can relax, you know. Um, so uh, it, it's difficult. A lot of time, unfortunately, we can't um, just um, take breaks. Uh, we're focusing on something. We just keep on doing it. So sometimes it's good to, you know, if you don't mind the alarm, you can set the alarm every 20 minutes, just take a short break, okay? So what, what else can you do during that break? You know, now you get to relax your eyes and relax your muscles. Um, we can also practice blinking, okay? So um, a lot of times when we're on computer, we're focused, um, we just kind of like stare at the screen, okay? Uh, probably a lot of people notice that, you know, um, we don't blink. Or if we blink, we blink uh, incompletely, okay? So, and also when we, uh, you know, look at computer, our blink rate decrease, uh, you know, by half. So that's another reason for dry eyes. So let's look at the examples here. You know, when we blink, we just kind of blink partially, partially, you know, partial blinking. So we do need to have complete blinking in order for our tears to completely moisturize our, our the front part of the eye, which is the cornea. So just make sure, you know, when we blink, uh, be mindful about blinking. You feel like your top and the bottom eyelid come together. So that way they can, um, you know, you can get uh, moisture in the eyes. Um, and we can also do blinking exercise during this time. Okay, what is blinking exercise? So um, it means um, close to, squeeze to, and open for two, two counts. So close for two seconds. So, and we can all practice together, you know, close your eyes for two seconds, 1,001, 1,002, and then you squeeze them, 1,001 and 1,002, and open your eyes and then blink a couple of times, okay? So, so that way, if you, uh, if you practice right now, you know, if you've, you can probably feel that your eyes are already more moist already, you know? So, so try to do that while you're taking breaks, that will be very helpful. And um, it's also very important that um, we take, um, you know, um, enough nutritious uh, food, taking a lot of nu nutritious food, okay? So the rule of thumb is to have a balanced diet, okay? And make sure you have all these green leafy vegetables and all the color, color uh, fruits as well. So all these uh, provide nutrients for our eyes, for our body, okay? For, for, you know, um, you know, these are examples, for example, like vitamin E, you get it from nuts and seeds, uh, C, of course, uh, fruits and some vegetables, and lutein, kale, cooked spinach, fruits, veggies, that are all good for the eye health. Uh, lutein, zeaxanthin, uh, those are good for macular health and beta carotene, you know, vitamin A, they all, uh, you know, help with our, uh, like, night vision as well, and omega-3 fatty acids, like fish, chia seeds, soy, um, you know, that help with uh, people who have dry eyes as well, and zinc, baked beans, cereal, pumpkin seeds, cashew, oyster meat, so all these um, are good nutrients for our eyes. So a lot of times we eat healthy, uh, it helps our body, helps our eyes, okay? And good night's sleep, it's very important as well. So um, healthy lifestyle. Um, at nighttime, we, for adults, we need to have eight hours of sleep, seven to eight hours of sleep. When kids are younger, of course, uh, they, they need a lot more uh, uh, sleep in order to grow, um, you know, so, 
uh, younger kids range from 12 hours to a little bit older kids, um, you know, nine to 11 hours. So uh, it's good uh, having good night's sleep help us to repair our body and also uh, it, it help uh, prevent dry eyes. Uh, when we're sleeping, our eyes are closed. Um, you know, when we're dreaming, our eye movements also help kind of like wash away all the debris uh, in the eyes. Um, lack of sleep can cause, um, you know, dark circles. You know, we all know that. And sometimes uh, it also causes uh, lid jumping. Okay. Uh, a lot of times, some people come in, they say, how come my, my lid's been jumping for a few days? And sometimes one of the reasons is just that they, they're tired or they drink too much caffeine, uh, they didn't get enough sleep. So getting enough sleep is very important. And of course, um, exercise and, um, and wearing sunglasses. Wearing sunglasses uh, can help protect your eyes from getting cataracts. Um, and, and exercise also help control diabetes or any type, type of, um, you know, a lot of diseases that can, like, for example, high blood pressure, uh, it can help control uh, the, the, the disease progress from progressing. And um, also studies show that, um, you know, exercise also help decrease some eye pressure. So uh, when someone has glaucoma, uh, it can help lower the pressure a little bit. And overall, uh, you know, healthy lifestyle, um, eating healthy and doing, you know, the, the exercises that I showed you before uh, earlier, and also just have proper lighting and and uh, positioning your computer, it helps, uh, you know, maintain your eye health. So this concludes uh, my part of the uh, lecture. So I'm going to turn this to Dr. Luke. So let me unshare the screen. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lin. So we're going to transition now to uh, Dr. Luke. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, Dr. Luke, just to introduce uh, her to everybody. Uh, Dr. Luke is a uh, MD and uh, she is an expert in ophthalmology. Uh, she is a faculty member at LOU for three years. Currently, she actually works at the California Eye Specialist. So today we're very glad to have uh, been able to invite her to tell us more about common eye ailments, for example. Also, Luke. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen and see if we can get this. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Dr. Luke and I joined um, the volunteer group in San Bernardino probably two years ago, I think, um, volunteering in the mobile clinic for sushi. And so Dr. Lena um, asked me if I wanted to participate with this eye care talk at home. And so I am happy to be part of this group. And some of the common eye ailments I wanted to briefly go over were some of the ones listed here on the screen. These could be sources of red eyes. So some patients will get a red eye and not know why, or red eyelid and not know why. But uh, styes, chalazians, which is a blocked oil gland, um, a red eye from a broken blood vessel, which is a subconjunctival hemorrhage. Um, dry eyes can cause your eyes to become red. Um, allergies can cause your eyes to become red. A viral infection or a bacterial infection can cause your eyes to be red. So, you know, the, um, the sty is kind of a generic term for a bump on the eyelid, and that can be caused by uh, blocked oil glands on the outer surface or the inner surface of your eyelid. A chalazion is more of an internal uh, we call it internal hordeolum, um, but that's a, a blocked oil gland internally, and those can last for months and not go away. So when patients come into the office, we either drain them um, or we give them a steroid shot or we tell them, you know, to do conservative treatment, which would be warm compresses, lid massage, get the oil glands to open up, and usually they can resolve by themselves. 
Um, subconjunctival hemorrhages are just a red eye. So I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, let's see. I can get this to go. There. Okay, so the upper right-hand corner is an example of a subconjunctival hemorrhage. It's a broken blood vessel, and that's like a superficial blood vessel that's broken. Sometimes these happen because people just have fragile blood vessels. Um, maybe they rub their eye inadvertently while they were sleeping, or their eyes were itchy and tired, maybe from staring at the screen too long or watching TV for too long. Um, it has been purported that it might be related to high blood pressure. Um, and some patients might not get enough vitamin C in their diet, which can cause uh, the, the collagen in our blood vessels to be weak. Um, you see a picture of another red eye to your left. It's a little blurry, um, but that's kind of a, a picture that I saw this morning. A patient came in with a red eye kind of not really sure where it was coming from, but she had a history of arthritis. And arthritis can cause inflammation um, in your eyes. That could be scleritis, which is the, the wall of the eye that gets inflamed. It could be an episcleritis, which is a more mild condition of that. And then on your bottom right-hand corner, you see the bump on the upper lid. That's a chalazion, or the blocked oil gland on the inner surface of the eye and how we treat those if conservative treatment at home with warm compresses and eyelid massage hasn't helped, we can either, like I said, um, inject a steroid uh, medicine in, in and around the area or flip the lid after it's been numbed and cut and drain it. Okay, let's see if I can move on to the next slide. Um, causes of tearing, um, or another name is called epiphora. So this could be from a blocked tear duct, which is in the inner corner of your, your eye, closer to your nose. And it's just right, right in the corners there, you have tear ducts that drain the fluid, drain your tears. And um, if you have too much of your tears being produced by the lacrimal gland up in the upper corner, outer corner of your eyelid, that's where the lacrimal gland is, producing too much tears, and then it doesn't drain all the way by your nose, um, that's a nasal lacrimal duct problem. And uh, oculoplastic specialists can diagnose that or do e even surgery to recanalize or put a stent in so that the tears drain properly. And as Dr. Lena mentioned, dry eyes can cause your eyes to water, almost like a um, an uh, overcompensation mechanism. Um, eyelid problems can also cause tearing. So if you have a droopy lower eyelid right down below and the eyelid's very loose, um, the eyelids are supposed to help retain the tears as well. And so those tears will just run down the cheek if you have a family member who you notice eyelids are loose and, and droopy, those tears will just run, run, run down the cheek. Um, that's called an ectropion, ectropion. Now, another condition where the eyelid turns in is called an entropion. So those conditions, the eyelid flips inward and the eyelashes rub against the eyeball and uh, can cause a lot of irritation. Uh, redness and pain. When the eyelashes rub against the cornea, we call that trichiasis. And uh, we can fix any of these problems by doing um, surgery. We can tighten the eyelids with a couple of stitches. Um, we can even use a freezing technique called uh, cryotherapy if uh, patients' eyelids or eyelashes keep growing inward towards their eye, we can freeze the, the hair follicles. Um, this is supposed to be an example of an entropion with trichiasis. So the eyelid is rolled inward towards the eye and the lashes rub against the eye cornea. 
And I get a lot of questions from patients about what eye drops are safe to use. And since a lot of us are staying home and maybe are maybe afraid to go to the eye doctor or just to go out in general, sometimes we self-treat and we just go to the local drugstore and find what we think will help us. And so I thought I would just um, show you some of the eye drops that are out on the market that are um, uh, probably safe to use, but um, I'll, I, there are some limitations to the drops. Uh, the first one on your top left, aloe, is uh, you know for allergies, and uh, you can use that. That is safe. Um, the one on your right, which is Lumify, is kind of new for red eyes. It works um, by constricting your blood vessels just like Visine would or like clear eyes, except the um, medicine works on your veins. So when I was doing my reading, I think it was alpha-2 receptors that are affected and that affects the veins rather than the arteries. And that is better because when you use clear eyes or Visine, um, when you constrict your arteries, you do get the red out. Um, temporarily, but then what happens if you keep using it, you get a rebound effect and then the, eye, the eye, blood vessels dilate and then the eyes become red again. So Lumify is just a very dilute prescription of bromonidine and that's actually a drop that we use for glaucoma patients to lower their eye pressure, but it is a very dilute um, concentration. So it should not really affect um, your eye pressure to, to the degree that it would be concerning. Zatador is also um, another eye drop over the counter that relieves itchiness or allergies. And that's been pretty good, it's antihistamine. There's a, I, I put a, a picture up of Visine down there at the bottom right hand corner. When I was little, I used to use Visine all the time in, in high school. And then when I became a resident and learned about some of the, um, not so good side effects of IZ and I stopped. And so I, I use Lumify if I need to, and it does help my eyes feel a little bit cooler. Um, this is a drop uh, that we like to give out samples of in our office, Sustain. It's a lubricant drop. And what you see here is preservative free vial. So there's no preservatives in that. You can use it as much as you want all day long to relieve dry eyes, to relieve any irritation, to wash your eye out from an eyelash or a foreign body. And those are really good to use. You can't harm your eye by using a preservative-free artificial tear. You can use it as much as you want. Refresh tears in the bottle have preservatives. And so you can use that um, every now and then during the day, but I wouldn't use that more than four times a day um, because the preservatives over time can cause a, a toxic reaction to the cornea. And um, so you wanna limit that amount of preservatives to your cornea. Theratears, you know, now that Theratears is another uh, brand. Um, it comes in a bottle and it also comes in a package of vials. It's also very good for your eyes. So these are, you know, some of the eye drops you may see in the drugstore that you want to <laughs> keep an eye out for. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a little bit about lash extensions because I've been seeing that a lot more now than, you know, 10 years ago. When I first started training in ophthalmology, um, just the trend for, you know, eye makeup, eye artistry uh, makeup, is just really boomed in the last several years. And so, I just wanted to mention that it's it's really important to um, be mindful of where you're getting your lashes done, what kind of glue you're applying to it if you're um, starting to get styes. If your um, eyes are irritated, it's probably better to have those removed than to, uh, you know, live with the, the irritation of the lashes. I know there's different types of lash extensions. There are the individual ones. There are the, 
the full lash um, glue ons, you know, there's the threaded ones, there's the, there, there's so many types out on the market. Um, and we see, I, I see them from all ranges, you know, young females to um, seniors, citizens <laughs> wearing them. And some, some patients come in uh, ready for cataract surgery and they have their lashes on. So if you're in the age range or you have uh, maybe a congenital cataract or you have a, you have a cataract that needs surgery, I highly recommend that you remove the lashes or uh, abstain from getting lash extensions um, just to keep everything sterile and clean before your operation. Um, even, you know, the, the use of mascara, you know, so, so you want to just avoid that um, before any kind of procedure of the eyes. And here you can see, um, you know, an example of eyelash extensions that you can just buy over the counter. This one's from Daiso. Um, here I wanted to just briefly mention that the, um, the importance of removing eye makeup, being clean about it, being gentle as well, because your eyelid skin, the area around your eye is very delicate. In fact, the eyelid skin is the thinnest skin in the body. So for, for those of us who wear eyelid um, makeup, um, mascara, eyebrow makeup as well, um, when we take it off, when we wash it off, it's really important to be thorough, but it's also very important to be very gentle. Over time, you know, the eyelids will get loose, just like a rubber band. If you stretch a rubber band over time, it's just going to get loose. And then hence the problem with entropion, ectropion, droopy eyelids. And so um, one of the products that I, I found has worked pretty well with removing not only eye makeup, but eye debris, um, bacteria that grows on the eye, the crusties in the morning, um, you know, the, the Aki soft lid scrubs are pretty good. Uh, you can get this light blue formulation, which is a leave on and you don't have to rinse it off. There's a dark blue box of Aki soft lid scrubs, which is the original form. And that one you, you have to rinse off and it, it burns a little bit but the light blue one's pretty good. And they offer an allergy formulation, which is a, a dark green box. And those you can get over the counter as well. Um, you know, other things like the facial wipes they offer um, at uh, your Walmart or your drugstore, just a, a regular facial wipe to cleanse the eye is also just as good. But I've, I found that these in particular really get off a lot of the um, the product, and of course, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have the right prescription for reading, um, wh whether that's contacts or glasses. So, if it's been more than a year or two and you haven't had your eyes checked, you know, it's important to uh, go ahead and make that phone call or book an appointment with your your local eye care provider um, because. Our prescriptions can change as we age. Um, dry eyes can cause astigmatism. Uh, cataracts can cause you to become more nearsighted or even to cause more astigmatism. And so you, you really wanna keep up with, the, with that. Um, as Dr. Lena mentioned, it's important to take your breaks. So for 20 minutes of screen time, take 20 seconds to look far away, go on a walk, just rest your eyes, practice blinking more, and um, you know, just be very clean um, about uh, your eyes. Even when you go to the eye doctor, make sure to ask if they've cleaned the instruments too, because um, you wanna make sure that you're getting uh, you know, good care and we work very closely with the face and the eyes. And so, you know, in our clinics, we have a shield that protects us, uh, a breath shield, and um, it guards from the top down. Um, and now that patients and providers are wearing masks, I feel that things are pretty safe in the clinic. On your left-hand corner at the bottom is an example of a provider doing a slit lamp exam. And we do that to assess the front of the eye and the back of the eye if you're dilated. And on your upper right-hand corner 
is a four opter and that's the machine that we use to check you for your refraction or your prescription. And um, if there's any questions, I think we can start with the Q&A session.